understand it if you're having trouble. So ladies and gentlemen, um, there's a couple things I want you to understand about what we're going to do with this. We need to multiply what we have as a binomial times another binomial. So there's a couple of rules and theories I want you to understand. The first thing is the distributive property. And remember, the distributive property states whenever you have a number multiplied by a parentheses in order, you have to multiply that number times both of your terms inside the parentheses. Right? The next thing I want you to understand is when we're talking about area, are you done? Yes. Keep it right there and go back, go back to oh. class and I'll turn it, I'll give it to her, okay? Okay. Um, okay. So we have length times width equals area, right? And one thing I want you guys to understand is you remember that for a square or a rectangle, if I say length times width, that's going to give me the amount of space inside that rectangle or square, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So any times we're multiplying two numbers, that's going to give us the area we could say of a rectangle. So if I was going to look at this, and I, what I can do is, if I'm having difficulties, I can rewrite this as kind of length times width. I can let the length be x plus 4 and the width be x minus 3. So what I'll do is I'm going to create my own rectangle where I'm going to say my length is x plus 4 and my width is x minus 3. Now, this is pretty difficult. You're like, well, this makes sense, Mr. Blue. I understand 4 times 3. That's 12. But what do you do when there's two numbers there, right? Well, what we can do is we could separate that. We could do 2 um, plus 1, right? And we could do 2 plus 2. All right? Sexy. Sexy. So if I was going to do this, what I would do is if I have two numbers, I'm going to break it up into two boxes. And then what I'll do is I'll just find the area of each one of these boxes. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2. As each one of these boxes has its unique length and unique width. And if you notice, if I add up all the areas of all these smaller boxes, it's going to equal 12, right? 12. So do you guys see how two, 2 plus 1 is 3 and 2 plus 2 is 4? So what I do is, if I have two numbers, I'll just break it up into two different boxes on this side, two different boxes here. So I'm creating four different areas. And that's the exact same thing we're going to do here. I'm just going to give each one of the numbers as its own length of a smaller box inside of the, inside of the larger area. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out what is the area of this box. Well, we could say the width is x and the length is x. So it would be x times x, which is x squared. This one, we could say has a width of x and a length of 4. 4 times x is positive 4x. Here we have width of negative 3 and a, um, or a length of negative 3 and a width of x. So that's going to be negative 3x. Here we have 4 times negative 3, which is going to be a negative 12. And then with, uh, here what I did was I added all these up. 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 2. And that equals 12, which is the same as this. Well here, you're going to do the same thing. x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 12, where we notice that those two terms combine because they're like terms to give us x squared plus x minus 12. And that is kind of a method for you guys to be able to multiply binomials. Does that make sense? Yeah. We can represent binomials as an area. So what does not make sense? Okay. Do you understand then? Do you understand how I can represent this as length and this times a width, right? So do you understand how I put them on the box? If I was going to multiply this times this, this represents now the area. As this is this is one side and that's one side. However, this is easy to find the area, right? You just multiply length times width. Got the area. Well now we have x plus four and x minus three. So how do we do that, right? Well, the way we can do that is separate them so we can say this length right here is x, this length is 4. This length is x, this length is negative 3. So to find this area, it's just x times x. This area is negative 3 times x. So you get that. So what you did is we get all the separate areas of each one of these four boxes. Well, when we add up the areas of all these four boxes, it gives us the total area. And that's exactly what I did here. Instead of writing 3, I broke it down into 2 plus 1. That's the same thing. 
But the reason why I did that is I could say that now, see this area is two times two, which is four. This area is one times two, which is two. And if you add up all these areas, it still gives you that larger area. So adding all these up is gonna give me the area of the box. And that's exactly what we wanna achieve when we multiply a binomial times a binomial, right? And in this time, we get x squared plus x minus 12. So that is another way for you to be able to multiply in, in regards to also you can do FOIL or the other methods we learned. That's just another way you could use um, to multiply binomials. Okay, questions? Yeah? Okay.